The global economy continued to expand in the first quarter of 2024, advancing 2.6% following a similar increase in the fourth quarter of 2023, revised 2.5%. There was notable growth in China, the United Kingdom, and emerging economies. World merchandise trade volumes rose for a second consecutive quarter, although more modestly than in the fourth quarter of 2023. The United States remains Canada's largest foreign investor and the most popular destination for Canadian foreign investments. In 2018, the stock of U.S. direct investment in Canada totaled $406 billion, while the stock of Canadian investment in the United States totaled $595 billion, or 46% of the overall Canadian direct investment abroad CDIA stock for 2018. Canada, the second largest investing country in the United States for 2018. U.S. investments are primarily directed at Canada's mining and smelting industries, petroleum, chemicals, the manufacture of machinery and transportation equipment, and finance, while Canadian investment in the United States is concentrated in manufacturing, wholesale trade, real estate, petroleum, finance, insurance, and other services. Canada's real GDP growth accelerated to 1.7% in the first quarter, mainly supported by household spending on services, while net trade remained stable and business inventory investment moderated. Economic growth was widespread in Canada, with 15 out of 20 industries growing, particularly in services-producing industries. On the trade front, Canada's exports of goods and services fell 0.8% after two consecutive quarterly increases, mainly due to a 1.3% contraction in goods exports, while services exports posted modest growth of 1%. On June 5, the Bank of Canada lowered its policy interest rate from 5% to 4.75%. The outlook for global and Canadian growth has been revised up for 2024 compared with the last forecast, and inflation continues to move lower in most advanced economies, including Canada. Economic activity picked up in the first quarter in Canada. Canada's real GDP rose 1.7% annualized in the first quarter of 2024 after showing near zero growth in the previous quarter. Higher household spending on services was the main driver of GDP growth, while slower inventory accumulation moderated overall growth. Household consumption climbed 3% making it the largest contributor to GDP growth. This increase was fueled by higher real spending on telecommunication services, rent, and air transport. To a lesser extent, household spending on goods made a marginal contribution, supported by spending on new trucks, vans, and SUVs. Net trade showed little change in the first quarter of 2024, with growth in exports of goods and services, 1.9%, only slightly outpacing the rise in imports, 1.5%. Exports of unwrought gold, silver, and platinum to the United Kingdom and Switzerland were behind the gain, while imports of clothing, footwear, and textile products led the growth in imports. On the other hand, inventory accumulation slowed in the first quarter of 2024, putting downward pressure on economic growth. The largest decline was observed in the motor vehicles sector, where inventory accumulation progressed at half the pace of the previous quarter. Economy of Canada The International Monetary Fund IMF, concluded that the Canadian economy appears to have achieved a soft landing. Inflation has come down almost to target, while a recession has been avoided, with GDP growth cushioned by surging immigration even as per capita income has shrunk. Housing affordability has reached its worst levels in a generation, with housing supply unable to fully meet growing demand. Meanwhile, the financial sector remains resilient, with banks well capitalized and liquid, although data gaps preclude a more definitive assessment of non-bank financial institutions. Real GDP growth is expected to pick up slightly this year, supported by the recently initiated normalization of monetary policy some easing of fiscal policy, continued, even if slowing, immigration, and the expansion of the Trans Mountain Pipeline. Inflation is set to continue declining, 
reaching the 2% target by early 2025. Risks around the baseline forecast are broadly balanced. An abrupt global slowdown could dampen Canadian growth and inflation alike, while tighter financial conditions could negatively affect the outlook. On the other hand, labor market resilience and stronger-than-anticipated U.S. demand could lead to a stronger growth outlook. Recovery Signs of recovery, however, are already apparent. The jobs market has shown notable improvement, and increased activity in the vital natural resource sectors is expected this year. This is expected to propel Newfoundland and Labrador close to the front of provincial growth rankings, with real GDP expanding by 2% in 2024. This should offset most of last year's decline, but will still leave real GDP well below pre-pandemic levels. The province's oil and gas industry is expected to pick up this year despite a rough start in the first quarter. A gradual ramp-up in production from the Terra Nova field is expected, and the return of the Sea Rose vessel this summer should provide the industry with an overall boost. Production is not expected to return to 2020 levels, but it is anticipated to increase compared to 2023, with all offshore oil fields back in operation by the third quarter. The mining industry should see a modest lift as well this year. Completion of the Voises Bay expansion project and an expected rebound in demand are poised to boost mineral shipments, boding well for the industry. Nickel prices, however, are set to soften considerably amid global oversupply, which could weigh on exports. Other segments of the economy are also seeing more activity. Labor markets have tightened considerably since last year, and consumer spending has picked up. The 6,000 employment gain since the first quarter of 2023, seasonally adjusted, has brought employment up to an all-time high, with gains more pronounced among service industries. Last month, the Bank of Canada trimmed its interest rate for the first time in four years by 25 basis points to 4.75%, becoming the first central bank among G7 countries to cut borrowing costs. The rates were at a more than two-decade high before the cut. Financial markets are betting that there is almost certainty of a rate cut at the Bank of Canada's July 24 monetary policy announcement, with 92% of bets favoring a cut. So, what do you think? While the world is facing inflation and development, will Canada keep rising and safeguard its economy? How did we do? If we missed something, please say in the comments. And if you like this video, please give a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel.